So here's my slides. They're running in, in an old game. And, uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So when I, was, when I was little, yeah, I, uh, I did some fancy art back in the day. I still got it. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I'm going to start now, I guess. I just have to click on, click on this and hit play. We played this little game called Slide. Um, here I am. Okay, so my name is Wilkie. Uh, I've, I've also been called Wookie at Starbucks. Uh, either one will work. If you're a Star, Star Wars fan, that's fine. Uh, so my, my daily job, I work as a digital archivist, generally for scientific reproducibility. So what I do is I work with scientists, and I develop tools, and I get paid kind of like by the government to help people who write papers uh, and do scientific research package their code up so that you can repeat it in you know, 10 years from now. So people who don't trust that you actually produce that graph can actually go and run your code and, and actually get it to work. Which is a really important problem that we kind of just kind of forgot that we needed to do. It's called, uh, what is it called? Um, the scientific method? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> somewhere down the line, we just kind of said that word and just didn't do just ignored what it meant. Um, turns out this problem is actually really hard. Uh, so it's actually hard to, if you come up with an archival solution, there's a few things that are difficult about it. Uh, it's really hard to evaluate it. It's really hard to say that, oh, I built this tool, you can use this, you can run this code 10 years from now. You really can't say that, you kind of just cross your fingers. And I kind of cross my fingers too. Uh, it's hard to convince others that your solution works at all. And the most difficult thing about archival is it's really hard to get people to care about archival. Uh, scientists don't want to put the effort in because they just want to publish really quickly and stuff like that. Um, and I find this really surprising because in the physical world, uh, there are, we, we have paintings that are hundreds of years old and we can actually go and see them, right? There is a process of preserving and people find that important about art. I can buy a plane ticket, I can go to, I can go to France and I can see the Mona Lisa and I can be mesmerized by it. Um, and I can see it and I can interpret it and I can see the culture that went into it and, and how it was produced. Um, and yet, when I come back home, I can't even I can't even compile code I've written uh, before I left, right? That, it's, you know, Python version change or whatever. Uh, so I, I, so I'll preface this, I, I think that all, all code, no matter what it does, is some form of expression and it's some form of art that, that you're trying to express through it, uh, no matter what it is, right? If you go into your job and you're writing some scripts, I, I kind of find that artistic. There's a, there's a certain part of you that's in that, in that code uh, that other people wouldn't have written it the same way. Like, that's the kind of thing we're talking about. So I'm using a very obvious example. I'm using video games as my, my mode to um, really say that this is important. And in particular, when I was a kid, I was really influenced. I became a programmer because of things like the demo scene and things like people doing interactive art. And I would download it with my dial-up connection and I would see these vibrant, uh, euphoric pictures in front of me and I would just get really into it. how does that work. Um, and one of the things I had when I was growing up is, was this game that looks really, really basic uh, called, called ZZT. Uh, the game itself is pretty unspectacular. And I'll show you what it is. So you play as this disembodied head. Okay, I gotta make sure I don't die. I'd, I'd be really embarrassing to get a game over screen uh, in your slides. <laughs> and so you see there's, there's creatures that run around and they try to, to kill you. And basically, you, you just try to shoot basically degree signs at them and basically like little Cheerios. It's okay, it dies when he touches you. And there, are, for instance, in this screen, you see some spinny arrows and they throw Cheerios at you and you try not to get hit by them because that would be hard, bad. And there's little boulders you can push. And I can, oh. I got 80 health, we're okay. And basically, that's the gist of the game, right? You just go walk around as this disembodied head, you collect keys, you try to get through these, these, AS, these ASCII art and ANSI art uh, screens. Um, and that's basically it. All right, and this is a very unassuming game that uh, is extremely popular, okay? Um, so before we get into why it's popular, let's just talk about this game and how we would archive this. This is a form of interactive media. You can't just take it 
put it into a box and put it on a shelf and say, yeah, you know, we got it. We did it. It's preserved. <laughs> um, it, it's an interactive game. So when we archive it, we have to preserve that interactivity. All right. So, um, so what we're going to do is, is talk about how people normally archive software. So what we do is really kind of naive. So one thing we can do, we have virtualization stacks, we have emulators, and all we need to do to archive a game, right, is just take some emulator or take KVM or take VirtualBox or whatever. We just package all the stuff we know we need to get it to run, we put it into a virtual machine image, and then we're, or we're done, right? We just throw it up on, on a website somewhere and we're good. Um, and so we can technically do that. And there's some problems with that that I, I want people to start thinking about when we think about this being the solution. It is, what do we do when uh, something new comes along and no one cares about KVM anymore? Uh, which is something that's gonna happen every week or so, right? People, <laughs> people go, that's, that stuff's bad, and stuff doesn't work anymore, and then they just don't maintain it anymore. Um, but what if it ends up being that this virtual, this virtual machine image only works on a certain version of, of VirtualBox, and then it stops, it stops working? Can we say that we adequately archive something uh, if we just have a virtual machine image, right? And then furthermore than that, we're getting to why ZZT is cool in the first place and why it's still popular. Is it enough just to archive the game? Is that, is that all ZZT is? Is that all anything is? Is that all Scratch is? If we just archive Scratch the tool, have we archived Scratch? Um, and I would, I would say no. And the, re the reason for this is that I've created my slides in ZZT, and that's because the game itself is not fun, right? It's, <laughs> I mean, I liked it as a kid, but it doesn't stand the test of time as much as what everyone has done with it. Because Package with the Game is a level editor that was fully featured with the shared version of the game. So for free, you could download ZZT and you have a game creation tool. And what has happened over the last 25 years, this game came out in 1991, um, is people have produced thousands upon thousands of their own ZZT world. All right, so it's not enough just to archive ZZT. We haven't archived the potential of the art that goes into this. Um, so we're gonna go into what can we do, what can we do to, to actually make this work? Um, and what we're going to do is I, I created a tool for scientific reproducibility, but secretly. I mean, I kind of wanted it to be something that can archive the art that I grew up with, so I made a general tool that can build virtual machines on the fly based upon what requirements you might have for them. All right. So the idea is ZZT isn't just an allocation that you can just run in a virtual machine. It is something that runs in DOS. Okay. Yeah. No, it's great. It took me forever. Thanks for liking it. Um, <laughs> so what we say is that ZZT is actually a, a DOS game. That's all we say. We say it's a, uh, there's an executable here. It needs to run in DOS. Good luck. All right. We don't we don't make a virtual machine. We just say, in the future, future people, this is what this is what the environment is. Okay. And then somewhere down the line, we also do the same thing. For tools like DOSBox, we say DOSBox is a program, there's its executable, here's how you build it, here's where the source code is, but most importantly, this is what, this takes its input a DOS program, okay? It's just, it seems so simple. It took me two years to build this, and only two seconds to explain it. <laughs> and with that, we can, for instance, yeah, that's the first. Um, <laughs> So we can, for instance, make a virtual, we can make a virtual machine image or we can make a Docker container that contains enough things based upon the slight descriptions we have to build up an execution environment for ZZT, right? And then 10 years from now, if Docker bites of dust, sorry, people who work with Docker, maybe that's gonna happen. We, we don't know, and that's the problem, and we could have something new, and then we all have to do is adjust the back end of the tool to say, you know, we have to build that stack up with something else underneath with a different architecture, and then we can build a new virtual machine image later. And one of the, th the cool things about doing it this way is
we can tell it, hey, also include a ZZ2 world inside. This one I like to call Adventures of Link 2. Uh, you can also call it Adventures in Copyright Infringement. <laughs> but capturing this is important. This is something we'd lose if we just captured ZZT the game. And we, would capture, we wouldn't capture the ability to make something new in our archive as well. We wanted to archive the ability to create new things as well as just preserve what, we, what other people have created. So we would miss out on the culture that went into making this, such as teenagers don't care about copyright. This is something we need to, we need to capture. Um, and, and we can see that what we have here, the, vir the virtual machine we created here contains a ZZT, a ZZT world, ZZT, and then I told it I wanted to run it in the browser, and that's the kind of the cool thing. We can add more requirements to the virtual machine. So I said, run it in the browser. I have a VNC JavaScript client, so make sure VNC works. And so it added to the virtual machine a VNC server, an X server, a windowing manager, DOS box, everything it needed to make this possible. All right, and that's, the, and that's really the gist of it. And so, maybe 100 years from now, maybe nobody will actually care, but you can go and you can. I've archived my slides, and it's the same process. And hopefully 100 years from now, somebody can look back on this Bang Bang Con logo that I made so painstakingly, and they can actually enjoy uh, the slides as they are. And that's really the, that's it. That's, that's really just of it. And I want to leave you with some notes. So take away from this, when you're building systems out, such as creation tools and art tools and these types of games with mods, think about how you're hurting or hindering or helping people archive what they make 100 years from now. Because um, there's a lot of tools where you upload things to the internet. How do we preserve that? And you have to start thinking about that when you, when you make these tools. And uh, if anyone has any funding that isn't the Department of Defense uh, and wants to help fund me, that would be appreciated too. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> uh,